December 15th, our last meeting of the year. How exciting. Um, our updates, let's talk about like broad strokes for our, from our community partners. Let's talk about who, like what, what for the year, like economically, how did we, what did we accomplish? I have to put you on the spot, Nancy. Oh, well, you know, just like you did a lot. Like I can think of lots of that's stuff that you brought up. Yeah, that's perfect. That's totally. Um, and okay, so I need first. I need uh, to uh, the agenda for December fifteenth. So moved. Thank you, Lynn. A second. Sorry. Thank you, Brian. And a vote. Hi. Uh, Hi. Oh, good job. <laughs> Sorry. Asking if we are having a meeting today. Good job. Uh, an approval of meeting minutes from November seventeenth. And I need a second. I oh look at me, I'm rolling. Um, and then is there any public? Oh, so it's a thing. Uh, I need. Is there anybody with public comment? You want any? No. Okay. Then let's move on to Mr. Sean Fenden and David. I just passed David, so it's surprising. Uh, Sean. I've met Sean. I had the wonderful opportunity interviewing his lovely wife at the store. This is so now, I don't, I don't think. Hey, Paul, could you go ahead and mute yourself? We're getting some feedback. I can hear myself meeting for everyone. Thank you. Uh, so. Sean, he is. I'll let you tell it. I could tell your story, but go ahead. Uh, just Sean. bring them close to you. Oh, sorry. Uh, Sean Finden, the Scapoose Grocery Outlet. I've been there for a year and five months now. Uh, so, on first time, well, second time in my life, uh, learning tree daycare, my wife and I had about uh, 50 kids, believe it or not, and we had about, a lot of kids. about, about uh, 30 employees. And um, so then, uh, I was with Myers for 32 years, ran a lot of their stores, did a lot of special projects for him and uh, bring our grandson to brain cancer. And at that time I decided I just wanted to try something different. So I was gonna join Grocery Outlet and he decided to jump along with us. So it's been a good experience running a business together. And I joined this uh, committee uh, works or run a business and do better for the uh, Scapoose. Perfect. I've had uh, family and friends lived out here uh, entire life from here through class night. Aunts and uncles still live out here. Cousins still live out here. So used to come out. Fantastic. Thank you. We love your store. Oh, <laughs> a lot of work. Yes. And obviously, but he is my neighbor. I've known him. Years he is a general contractor. Our guy speaks five languages. One of those guys. <laughs> um, let's see. And then so let's go to our partner updates. Mr. Paul Vogel. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. I'll uh, just briefly run through a few things. Keep it local. The uh, Wonderland and the 30 days of, of holidays, uh, promotional campaigns are underway. You can go to keepitlocal.com and download information where to pick up those cards. There's about a $1,500 drawing from this from the punch cards. Somebody's gonna walk, I, I think it was a thousand last year. Somebody's gonna walk away with a $1,500 check um, once they fill out their cards and put them in the drawing. And about $900 in savings in the scratch offs. And these businesses are from Stern, Stern, Stern all the way from North County to South County, Vernonia, everywhere in between. So I encourage you to not only support local businesses, but uh, also take advantage of these and get something back. Uh, SBDC has just crested 70 clients, We've only been actually uh, taking on clients since May. 
Jason's been very, very busy um, and uh, is in the top five of the SBDCs in the state in terms of clients per, uh, uh, per advisor. Um, retention, expansion, recruitment. We've got four recruitments underway, one relocation, uh, two local expansions we're working with. Um, I think all but one of those were, were collaborating with the port and certainly with private landowners uh, as we don't own land. Tourism, uh, we are going to be hosting the annual governor's uh, tourism conferences in Portland this year uh, or next year. It's going to be in April. And uh, we have elbowed our way in. And we'll be hosting one of their um, outside activity events in Columbia County. And we're putting that together. That'll be, I think, the second week of April. Uh, but uh, along with that comes an awful lot of publicity and promotion as part of the agenda uh, at the tourism conference, as well as, as well as getting some key folks out here for what will be, I think, pretty damn fun combined activity. Um, and uh, we also awaiting, I think, the 21st. Well, I can correct me. The 21st we're supposed to hear. We have a, a branding grant request, capacity grant request into Travel Oregon. Uh, and we're supposed to get word on the 21st. Government always works and arrives on time. So uh, don't hold your breath, but we'll let you know as soon as we know. A um, couple other things going on. We're uh, the Innovation Hub grant, uh, planning grant. OPAC got. We're working with them on, on that and a bunch of other stakeholders. Uh, we're working with OMIC on a training and workforce program. They're going to be, well, they'll be getting their information better together, but they're recruiting high school students as well as adults for a side-by-side -side, uh, workforce program. And um, I think you all know we have a new director of PCC training center and they'll be they'll be um, placing a new uh, industry outreach coordinator as as Francois Weavers has uh, is retiring at the end of the year so if you know Francois send him a message Patty Hawkins is the new uh, director she's from PCC and uh, they'll be developing the outreach position into a comparable one over the next year a comparable one with the, the director over the next year and uh, at CET, we've got, due to elections and various other things, we've got three new board members we'll be voting on in, uh, in January. And uh, we've just uh, released our annual report. If you'd like a copy of the annual report, let us know, and uh, we'll get that to you. Uh, th this committee is a member of CET, so we'll be sending one to the committee, but anybody else who would like one, we're happy to, happy to send that to you digitally. I think that's it. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Did you, how many businesses did you say are being at property here? Uh, well, there are a bunch of them. Retention, expansion, but I didn't write the number down. Well, there, there are a bunch of, bunch of them, but we're, we're, we're working with seven okay. um, companies right now. And none, uh, let's see, five are not looking exclusively at Scampus. Ah. But two are. Yep. Okay. All have we reached out to any of the uh, in east side in the industrial east in, since that's been in the paper all the time about how people hate it there and want to move. You you kind of broke up. It, what what location? Oh. Uh, the businesses like. Uh, salt and straw, it's been the big one, not that we could support to move out of the east side of Portland. We, uh, we, we have to be really careful. How, so the answer is yes, <laughs> but we do it very, very carefully. And we do it through our partners at Greater Portland Inc. Um, you you kind of have to play nice with folks and all of that. And to your point, the, the, you know, the retail business, somebody who's, who's dependent upon uh, you know, population density and lining up around the block, probably not the best, but uh, we work with Greater Portland Inc. as well as Business Oregon, and we are part of um, 
It's called the, uh, they, they have two cohorts, the Economic Development Professionals and the Small Cities uh, Group within Greater Portland. Um, and we, uh, yes, we get the word out and we also listen carefully for businesses that are dissatisfied and reach out um, to those folks. And two of the relocations we're working on, uh, I don't know if I put dissatisfaction at the top of the list, but I think it's in the top three of their reasons for moving. But fortunately, they, they actually want to want to grow and have more space. But yeah, it's uh, it's because it's a crisis. It, it's a crisis in uh, certainly the inner inner southeast Portland. Fun noise is salt facilities on the east side. Yeah. Do you know how many people they employ? Oh. I can't believe it. Hey, Paul, what do you know about uh, the labs in Columbia or in St. Helens? They have like five buildings. Who is that? Are they range manufacture like shampoo and soap and stuff like that? I know a bit about them. I think they're a port tenant. There's Hey, Nancy, what do you know about Rain Shadow Labs? They have like four. What is it? Well, how come they have four or five buildings? Why aren't they all in the same? Because how fast it is. Oh, okay. They just haven't been able to. Their potential is. Fantastic. Christine. Really have. Contract manufacturing or is it their brand? Mostly private labor. Christine, um, I came out of the chemical industry, uh, specialty soaps. Yeah. And I don't know anything about this company. Usually, when you uh, have a soap manufacturer, plant, and they will segregate uh, manufacturing by types of products. Oh. So they may actually have different buildings for different types of products. Okay. That isn't really why they did it. They just did it because they just did it. Because they kept growing. They needed right. space. Thank you so much, both of you, for giving me that. Uh, and then, Mr. Casey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? So fantastic. Thank you. Are you going to continue to be our person? Sure. Hey. You have me? Yeah. I, of course. Of course. We love you. We were just asking if. That's my the, intent. The, well, that's one, I guess, update is we will be giving it up and put assignments next month, that process. Um, knowing how that works, being a new guy, um, takes you a little bit of time to get the spots that you want. So um, the newcomer gets a bit of leftovers, and then if there's a certain area, it's just the I guess reality. I guess it's up. We know where we are. <laughs> um, no. Ouch. She shows up at the next <laughs> and we'll be wrestling for this. Oh, OK. Um, I mean, we do have sandwiches normally. Yes. Not today, but normally. The bagels here. They can make chewy, a though. sandwich with bagels. <laughs> well, with that on committee assignments, I have uh, um, done some work to secure uh, thoughts and, and a lot of those are the economic um, groups. Um, will have to fight me for those over the next years. Yes, um, but we're looking forward to a, a little and welcome Kelly. Um, I think she'll get sworn in on the first Tuesday of the year, so that'll be official. Um, a lot of the same stuff. We've just made progress, I guess, giving you a, an update. Uh, the last time our public health center in the annex renovation for house annex, a lower floor should be done in a little over a month by the end of January. Along nicely there. Uh, um, as we speak, so about a month more and that will be finished space. Do there, is it going to be like vaccinations or? Uh, they, they'll have that ability to provide vaccinations. Um, um, a certain, there's three um, exam rooms for uh, be a lab with uh, vaccine storage um, and, and then everything from septic systems to restaurant license. That's oh, oh, so okay. Department, well, public health. Uh, a okay. department of about 15 folks that 
five locations spread out around. Now, we did not have a department in Columbia County five years ago that was outsourced to, and the state had uh, informed us that we weren't allowed to uh, provide public in that way anymore. So uh, five years ago, we hired a public health administrator or so years hit and uh, now it's a 15 person department um, and it's not just because of COVID that kind of expedited the process on, on getting that program uh, into a requirements. Um, so a 15 person department without a home um, with our facilities renovations shuffling shuffling new spaces uh, comprises about half of the bottom floor of the courthouse annex where and development other functions were down there um, entirely completely upgraded um, space pretty nicely done at uh, one point um, not a cheap venture but uh, was one of the um, allocation um, so that's coming along nicely should be grand opening by February 1st I guess uh, some move in, I guess, uh, might take a couple weeks to get set. Got a ribbon, I guess. Coming along nicely. Um, John Gum is in permitting phase. Uh, the historic review just happened this week. Um, the uh, site design review is in progress, and our building plans specs are uh, next week. I hope you don't have a hard time getting through that permitting process. It's tough. Out of energy and not it's not the county. Um, well, and Wally's not. It uh, we've spent a lot of time working with the city uh, throughout the design of, of all the spaces at John Gum, um, and we're actually already down that road a little bit, even without it officially being. So expect to go quite smoothly, um, but it's been. Fun. already so we feel good about the permitting the budget is uh we will get the final proposal from that we're working with and decide whether to go into contract or execute the work um or put the project out to bid like higher and we want it to be um, I, I think there's probably a 50 50 chance whether uh move forward with the proposal we get for the uh, guaranteed maximum price to finish out John Gum, or we'll um, put the project out to bid. Have those options with contracting format. So fingers crossed. Uh, we're also with John Gum Tuesday, uh, probably Monday. We'll, be, we'll submit uh, grant application over the last couple of months through the National Service uh, Historic uh, Building Preservation Grant asking for seven hundred thousand dollars to go towards uh, exterior um, renovations on um, I think our project fits quite well with it's the save America we will there um, our board's office services team to develop that application and uh, across there we won't find out until July whether we're award funds um, I may have you guys an update, but it, it's uh, for um, museum relocation to the John Gum uh, building. That was a thousand dollar and an endorsement is what they call it for four hundred thousand dollars towards uh, the renovation cost for the museum space at the John Gum building, um, and that funding is supposed to be secured during the next legislative session. Um, that endorsement, so. That's good news, and then about a hundred thousand uh, dollars through PUD rebates um, are essentially secured for John Gum. So there's a million dollars there that we're pretty hopeful for the cost um, that project. So next week we'll see um, which direction we go. Whether we fingers crossed. Um, Fairgrounds RFP just went out for a new. A roof only uh, 
uh, about a 5,000 square foot building or grounds along with four three roofs of the existing barn structures um, from a grant that we got for the fairgrounds. I think it's about a $4 million going into that. Uh, RFP just got released last, I think Monday actually. Um, old courthouse RFP is in draft go out for $2 million of renovations to the old courthouse for grant the, uh, the state. Um, they have to be in contract with a complete, it's a design build contract. So we have to have the contract and then design um, to lock in that funding. Uh, so we're on track to uh, um, be able to utilize that funding and make some the old courthouse elevator seismic stuff um, uh, rooms and trying for a backup generator there, but that will support both buildings. Prescott Beach acquisition been a two year back and forth process. We are down to three conditions that all have to do with um, um, environmental conditions and uh, indemnity and liability with um, environmental conditions. Uh, negative created by an old mill operation nearly a hundred years ago, um, and a tip to tat, a tip or tat between the on deciding how to uh, um, who's going to take certain liabilities and risks with the actual environmental concerns. We've done enough research that we're not too worried about that, but on paper, obviously nobody will accidentally buy their own property. Done quite a bit of research, done a huge concern. Um, it's been a two year negotiation with them. Price everything on, read on other than um, that. This next month we should uh, get that taken care of and be uh, able to sign. I'm um, in the intent there is to develop Prescott. We're not camping and oh, the water access and all sorts of. And the uh, recreational opportunity. We are continue to be excited about just about there on a 90 acre forest. We'll uh, provide revenues go towards um, affecting um, go towards five or so years. See. Oh yeah, we're busy. Um, we move at a government's pace, though, so lots in the works and um, little by little. But I think when you know, if you really look at it over the last year, so what is in the old courthouse? If the museum's moving, what's over there? Um, the museum move will happen obviously when John Gum is complete. Right now, that schedule, um, I mean, like, uh, depending on some of the decisions we make next week, um, actual construction. Uh, could start earlier, but right now I think is uh, about a nine month process. Um, then we'll have the ability to move the museum and other operations over to John Gum. Um, what's going in the old courthouse will free up space um, for some state court operations. And um, the ultimate goal is to move the district attorney's office further renovation, the old courthouse and move the district attorney's office into that building, their operations and separate, provide a little better separation from state court operations. So best practices for is not necessarily to have the district attorney as embedded into the state court space. So the ultimate goal would be the top of the annex being 100% entirely state court operations and the bulk of the old courthouse to be the district attorney's office other than the historic courtroom remain um, there will be a little bit of conflict, but better operational flow. Interesting. Thank you. So, uh, Ms. Heidi, do you want to UD? I feel like I should give more, like, more than just, hey, Casey, just for Sean's benefit. He's the, are you communications director? So I will 
I will be better, Sean, about telling you why and what these people are. Other things that we did were to move and we are always looking for opportunities to provide an economic development area. Color, edit. They have credit. Thank you. And I'm going to do it out of order, Jeff. I know you're just on the edge, but she's already got the microphone, so to go. <laughs> It means on. Okay, now Jeff can go. We'll work on the microphone. <laughs> Thank you so much. Technical difficulty. Oh, there we go. So I'm near the Port of Columbia County. Yeah, I'm uh, in my fourth year. Or, you no, know, I'm coming up on my fourth year. End of my fourth year. Um. Probably the biggest news at the port happened yesterday. Uh, we signed up again, Luba, zone 800 of agricultural property at the port of uh, Port Westward, from agriculture to industrial. Wow, that is we have tried three times, and we are um, are convinced that the fourth time charm. We shall see. Uh, obviously. These are not uh, guaranteed outcomes, but we purchased this property um, probably 10 years ago, 12 years ago, and we purchased it for, for all the right reasons. Um, we wanted to protect that land. We didn't want it to be open to anything uh, and everything. We purchased the land knowing that it was designated agricultural and knowing that we would have to go through this process. No one un believed that it would be such a lengthy and expensive process. But uh, we're in it now and we're going at it again. And so we shall see. Again, we're looking at probably a year and we know the results of this new effort uh, because it isn't actually us. It's it's we are taking this back to the county. County will have to go through their process to decide uh, whether or not they also agree that this needs to be pursued. And then it goes to Luba. The port will be responsible for handling the effort at Luba itself. So it's quite a process. Complicated as all things, as you were pointing out, all things are very slow and methodical. But uh, the end result being that we don't expect that this used for industrial. Number one, mitigation involved, that is for sure. Number two, probably uh, impossible to get enough dock time because the tie-in with this rezone is the only way that is they consider it needed and necessary to change it as long as that in industry is our dock. So that is the whole key, uh, opening an opportunity for a business at Port Westward. Also yesterday, yes? Question. I did on that, but three other times and they said. Well, it, it, they don't just say no. They say no, but. Oh, you have you're answering the buts. Okay. We're answering the buts. I like it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. 
No, no but what, yeah. Does Luba stand for something? Oh, the Land Use Board of Appeals. Oh, Luba's cute. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Um, okay. Process because in Oregon, agricultural land is designated as the most important use for land. So it it's a very serious process. I mean, it, this is something that is more needed than it is to be left as agriculture. And then a cultural uh, endeavors out at Port Westward, the port is surrounded by farms. And um, I will also mention created a new um, agricultural committee uh, with the port and got, I think it's local farmers from the area. We just had our first meeting this month and we will be continuing on the monthly basis for a way for the port to support agriculture. Because obviously we all know how important agriculture is and that those people have been out there and doing their, trying to run their operations in conjunction with very hard to make this uh, uh, not a competition, not a fight between industry and agriculture. And that is foremost, how do we make sure industry alone and that we're also supporting the agriculture that already exists out there. Um, the other big issue uh, item that came up at yesterday's meeting was uh, Paul, or Paul from Next G read that Next is uh, now in the process of going what is called through what is called a SPAC. SPAC is, uh, I forget that, what it stands for, special something or other. And it's an acquisition. It's a different form of an IPO. A in which is money to continue on pursuing the um, pro project at for the renewable diesel. Kurt gave us an update on how the SPAC works. Uh, he was very uh, informative about why people do a SPAC, and what that means for them, what it means for us. Basically, what he said is his organization is driving. Um, it involves a, a buyout of another investment group. This is way above my level of understanding as far as finances go, but very much a part of the way investments are created and used in today's market. And I bet this than I do. No? I've been this. But we will, we will see. I mean, supposedly, yeah, this is so bigger pool of money coming in for the investment uh in nancy so i'm, I'm assuming like an ipo is going to be publicly traded stock yes. is this going to be private i assume this is privately held no says a strategy no. often pursued yeah. by head yeah. to sell the spac after the ipo and keep the warrant that could increase in value of the spac stock it will become public it will become a public company oh well okay to Mr. Efert was, you know, are you surviving in this in this new arrangement? And he said yes, that he is actually go going to remain the largest stockholder. So he he will still be the head of this whole, but it is a way for them to attract more money into the project. As Spotlight. They had some issues with the railroad spur. Yes. Has that been resolved or what's kind of going on there? Well, no. Resolved in the fact that they were denied. So they, they, and the whole reason that they wanted the rail spur out there was to not create more of a problem in moving train traffic because 
again, we come back to this issue between the farmers and the industry out there. Railroad tracks can result in cars. The farmers are trying to get on the other side and it can create problems. So they thought, well, they're going to resolve that by having a longer spur that they can just park the cars on until the cars are unloaded. And then that option has now been taken away from them. With way to work around that and create a new spur in a different place. I have no idea if that's the direction they're going. I believe there are some options, probably not for as big as they were originally but still in all, it will not hinder uh, the overall result. I mean, it just will hinder uh, how smoothly that may go out there or the involved. You. Sure. Uh, the other issue or the other item I want to get for a $50,000 grant for a new strategic um, project review that we are to be doing at the port every five years and a little behind. We now have the money and we're going to be having this new review and a new strategic plan put together here in the next year. Uh, say that we are, we do have two positions that we are looking to fill. One is a property manager. Uh, working in conjunction with Miriam, who heads up all the property management for both the um, next at Port Westward. And we are all for a new CFO, um, Bob Gadotti, who has been there for many years and a fabulous job, is going to be retiring. And we are looking for a new CFO. So if you know anybody who is I know CFOs. You do? How oh, many? You do. See, that is what I do. I know that's what you do. Well, you you can just send them our way. <laughs> Thanks so much. Jeff, our wonderful librarian. You want to recap? Uh, it's here to um, buy several thousand dollars library. The average Publication date on the books in the school is mid 90s. Yeah, they're very old. Um, <clears throat> so we made a little bit of a dent in that. Uh, obviously, movies in the park really blew up this year. Um, we had several hundred people every night. Oh, it was huge. So, um, planning on doing it at that scale again next year. We got grants to refurbish the park too, besides the PUD grant. We got a state grant to buy the tables, the solar chargers, and a bottle filling station, which is still in the library basement, waiting on the city to install it. Um, let's see. Oh, and we went fine free, charge overdue fines. Oh, well, that's fantastic. I'll What we'll be doing early next, participating in a study, and I've mentioned this before, with OHSU and the National Institutes of Health to see if once a week minor exercise causes an improvement in exercise. And I completed my researcher training in that last month, and we'll be starting that, I think, in February recruiting people and planning the action group meet. The National Institutes of Health want us to have 15 to 20 people for the initial group. So if you know people, send them my way and there'll be more know publicity people. coming out. What do you need? What kind of people? People who don't exercise. Oh, perfect. Of any age. <laughs> Only 20. What? If you could just do our entire committee. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And also, we'll be doing oh. GIS, ArcView, software mapping classes starting in February. That's fantastic. But those will be in 8 to 10 before the library opens. 
in the library because we'll need to use the plug terminals there. Nice. Uh, are the charging stations up and going? What? Charging stations for my car? I mean, for those. For no, cars? no, no. Uh, we did that yesterday, but. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know when. Uh, what I was told was that the hold up now is Tesla. Oh, it's always. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I don't think Josh is here. Josh here? Josh, I'm going to have to browbeat him into coming again. And Lori, so much has happened for City of Scapoose. I'm so excited to get your update. Well, I didn't know we were doing a year long update. So Let's I'm just, just talk about, I didn't hear what was the result of the Buxton. Is that done? Well, I was not going to talk about that because it's not done. Okay. Um, but I'll tell you where in the process and we'll leave it at that. Um, it's on second reading. It'll come back Monday, this coming Monday, the 19th for second reading. Typically procedural, they'll read the ordinance title again and take the vote. Last month, um, so that's where that's at. Um, we have a couple of upcoming pre apps meetings I can share with you about. Um, Let's see, this afternoon we have a pre-app uh, meeting with Scapoose Bay Watershed Council. They will be doing another creek uh, restoration project on the Grabhorn parcel, which I'm sure you all know is north of Veterans Park. So we'll talk through uh, their requirements, submittal requirements for their thing I for. Uh, we also have next, Wednesday, we have a pre-op with Peak Performance Gym for site and review to do some interior uh, work inside the old Sears. That was my question. What's going in the Sears? So we need three gyms. Oh, so that's what they're proposing, a gym and yoga studio. And they would also occupy where the glowing putters was previously. Well, they're a move, aren't they? They're not a, they're not a new business. I think they have several other locations. Peak, peak performance. I don't know what locations are. Was it in Portland? I don't know. We somebody had looked. Sure. Do they have a peak performance? Is that one of those? That, that may be Snap Fitness. Well, there's another one. No, they they didn't. Their hours are not 24. In the documents they've submitted, it looks like it's it's not a 24 hour gym. This one. How? Oh, but I do look forward to the yoga. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to do Jeff's study between two lovers. We also have um, an inquiry meeting application. For or a Chick-fil-A food cart, a single cart on one specified location and sell Chick-fil-A sandwiches. So uh, we haven't until yet to make sure they're meeting what they need to meet. Um, so we'll we'll have a look at that. And then that meeting's in early. I'm curious, you're saying they'd be open one day a month? One day a month, they would come out and set up and that's where they would have to come when they come. It's a roving Chick-fil-A. It doesn't rove in our city. It would park in the one place it gets. No, I know, but I mean, more. it moves. Yeah. It has another yeah. 29 locations that it's going. Is that bizarre? That seems very bizarre. Um, it sounds like they do this in several other places already where it's just once a month. I don't know. I guess it works for them. So, yeah. That big line. Well, the um, brief update, I don't have like super, super um, concrete details, but the peace can receive quotes recently for uh, a sign that will go on the peace candles. So um, we'll be looking at that here soon to see which company we'll go with. Um, the neon flame portion um, of the candle, the neon uh, tubing has been constructed apparently very hard to find someone to work on that. 
Turns out most of those people live in the Las Vegas area. Yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> um, so the the flame is a little bit in still. They'll put that together, get it charged up and um, installed. We're hoping. Uh, I don't think it'll be done by Christmas. So we've all been waiting. So we'll get that hopefully wrapped up uh, after the first of the year. Um, let's see, Healthy Smiles, which is a new dental clinic that the planning commission this last fall has already submitted their plans, um, construction construction document. If they're moving. Um, and then the back to the peace candle, the second building um, on that site, the apartment building received temporary occupancy approval this week. The first building, which is the one closer to the highway, is um, 40 units full. Wow. Um, and then they've already received, I don't know, maybe 15 um, uh, units or so of the second building are spoken. So that's all I have. I think NJ had a few more things to add. A couple. Um, so first up, we've been trying to find some ways to market and get the word out there about the small business spotlight that we've been doing. We posted that Brown Butter Bakery was the December recipient of the award book. And apparently people love Brown Butter Bakery because it got 128 likes and there's 12 comments, which for our social media is very, very, a very popular post. We've been working with Mayor Elect Backus over here to get him up to speed on all of our committees, including Economic Development Committee. We gave you a very silent and I'm sure you are home and reading. Uh, for the 50 year plan, we're still uh, opportunities analysis, the draft uh, version analyzed at the, at the moment. We are still working out how uh, job growth over the next 20 years will be projected, like what, uh, what to extrapolate those numbers. Um, but yeah, that's in the works. They've been incorporating comments that they've received from uh, the EDC and the 50 year committee council and planning commission. Um, just again, ground truthing, just to make sure it's fitting scampoos with all of these studies. You all should have for me on the boards and committees dinner, which is back in January uh, 22 when it was in April. So uh, it'll be January 25th at 6 p.m. We're doing Extapa again, so invited. Please RSVP though. Catering order to make. You can just email me. Yes. You only get one, right? You only have one plus one. That's what it says. One plus one. Yeah. One plus one. So you have two. Thank you. <laughs> it's just the more option to say it than we only have. <laughs> and then looking to the future, uh, some EDC projects next uh, meeting in January, Chris Nagelsbach, the city engineer, will be bringing someone uh, to talk about uh, potentially redoing the street light. Ella Nagelsbach from Columbia Economic Team, the opportunity that we can pursue. So uh, big news about that, and we'll have someone here that you all can talk to. At and then also Chair Christine Turner has been working with Wella on Destination Oregon stuff. And uh, so we will try and uh, bring Wella in on February. Oh, she's here. She's going to chat about it. <laughs> right there. She's WC. Oh, look, there she is. Welcome, Wellen Nagelsbach. <laughs> yeah, no couple is doing more for economic development than the Nagels box. Oh, for the record, and I already told Well in telling Chris that we did not want to work on light poles, and he just said, okay, the lady will be here in January. So here, here we are. We're working on it. Poles, economic development light poles. But we're going to do it in January. It's going to be so exciting. Brian's already researching it. He's super excited. Um, I'm not. So <laughs> we went through the updates. Before I go to well, I just want to make sure I have all this stuff. 
Uh, discuss the outcomes of the 12-12 council check-in. That's me, and then we'll go to Wella. On council, uh, and we presented our backward. We only looked forward on what we want to accomplish this year and how we can best partner with them. So the things that we had talked about are listed here, but that's what we had come up with in our previous meeting the applications for the grants I was going to I in if somebody else wants to join me that would be fantastic to kind of put the grants out there to the businesses in Skepu so they are aware of it and we can off like basically sell the grant and then those grants would be reviewed by staff and then come here before presented maybe we could do like a cursory overview and make sure that it meets the the objective of that urban renewal grant program that that we had been a part of however many years ago. Um, I'm, I'm working on language to make that proposal to the Urban Renewal Agency. So that's already in the works. Fantastic. And uh, reviewing or maybe making that clear. Yep. Is that also that's part? In there. Yep, okay. absolutely. So that's um, then and we did talk about with Lori because the a little bit of the footwork, as I understand, to kind of look at the downtown overlay and the design design aesthetics and stuff like that. But that will also be part of the 50 year plan. But since the 50 year planning process is so long and we don't know when that's necessarily slotted, we're just going to do a little bit of the, the pre work. Yeah, I mean, essentially, it takes a long time. Um, and so what you what you all can be doing is identifying what portions of the you want to revise um you talked about um uh, you know what that would actually involve boundaries of the district so all of those about how we want to go through that but essentially you could come up with the ideas and even the proposed language um or changes uh, that once we're getting into code changes part of the 50 year plan, some of that work will have already been done. It would also be an opportunity to maybe lower construction costs in some of the code so that it might mm -hmm. help stimulate growth mm -hmm. without affecting aesthetics. Actually. Talked about uh, just giving some ideas of who Scapoose is, that branding. No, you're into that. Yeah, we talked about that. Um, no, that's what for, our, for our future goal. Okay, so would, would that be under? A vision recommendations. Got it. Hey, uh, I had a... so, oh, Lori, so we're going to be doing light posts in January. I had a thought, I don't know if I Chris ahead of time or not. I had a thought that these light posts should be equipped with electrical outlets. Yeah, indeed. The yeah. So that we could off about wanting to have holiday lights more spread, especially in the old town old yeah. old area. It would seem this is the time yes. to do that. And so I don't know if he needs a heads up. That he wants the outlets. That's okay. part of it. Okay. The thought is, and how this ties into an development as far as we need purpose. Have a corridor overlay that requires decorative light posts. However, we have several different varieties, I believe, at this point, and we didn't have like a standard that someone had to use and the PUD, the ones we currently have, oh. they don't like servicing. And so the thought has been, let's get a standard light pole that, that this committee approves of um, that we can then Tell people they have to use when they're developing in the downtown overlay a grant then to cover that and then the existing polls get them up to date get them all like standardized we can put lights on them we can figure out what we want to do with them do we want hanging baskets like banner arms all of that stuff because that does tie into just kind of you know aesthetics of the downtown yeah, we yeah. need that another thing too is that our old town overlay currently there's areas that are required to have not. correct so we may want to address that as 
part of the way we try to create yeah. the appearance of a downtown is by standardizing something yep. and in the area that they're required in. So this might be, but I'm going to ask it anyway. So if we've decided that this particular area is the downtown and so it's going to be cute, but then we still have that other problem. Uh, on the other side of the highway, you mean first street? Well, both sides, I, I would think you would want to have still in the overlay. But again, that's a topic for discussion because we're not saying, you know, yeah, it's on both sides of the highway. And I think that as we envision it, we probably want it on both sides. It really sparked that that side of the city to really take off and redevelop yet. But I wouldn't say that we orphan that or don't want that to develop. That's the face of Skip who's right. Exactly, so. Yeah, I mean, I think we, again, that's that's a discussion we can have for sure. Has, has there been any more discussion on apartments going in kind of over on First Street, over kind of behind the, both this or yeah. the credit union? Behind the credit union. Um, yes, there was some discussion. So the previous approval for apartments there expired. Well, in the Noah Sharf. So they he did get an approval for that development. It's there. Um, he did talk about bringing it back, and that was um, just reapplying for the same, basically the same thing. And so, I mean, I think it's still the thought is there, but I haven't heard anything lately. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Fantastic. Wella, would you be so gracious to talk about all the information that you have and how it would fit Scapoose and how we could be a resource to you guys? Well, I didn't realize I was going to be asked to present, so I wasn't really prepared for that. I just saw that you guys were discussing it on the agenda and thought I would make myself available to answer any questions you might have. Just the broad strokes. Um, well, in terms of... Um, in terms of, you know, light poles, um, we could definitely um, in the spring, we're being told that the Travel Oregon competitive grants will be released, which is what we did in Vernonia, where we got the $66,000 grant uh, to uh, do beautify their downtown Main Street. We did um, uh, hanging baskets with uh, irrigation. Um, cleaned up a lot of uh, the pocket gardens and then um, provided, uh, uh, I think we, it was eight, it started out as eight, uh, seven murals and we ended up with eight. Um, <clears throat> sorry. But with that, there was a, there was a, a pretty um, ambitious volunteer up there that really wanted to see the, the downtown beautified and, and she worked with the city manager. They had a lot of things that they wanted fixed up. Um, including new trash cans and and um uh flower uh baskets on the trash cans all through the downtown so but as part of um so so we could definitely if you had a wish list we could work um with that and possibly work on that um CET as part of the destination ready program with uh, Travel Oregon. We have a list of projects um, that have been identified. Isaac with the city was one of the stakeholders where we all worked and um, we kind of came up with a, a strategic plan countywide. And so we have a list of projects there. We didn't really, um, Scapoose wasn't um, at the top of the list for many of those. Um, within that program. And so that's why I'm saying the, the competitive program in uh, the spring could be something. We're being told that the, the destination development department is putting together a main street type of program, but we don't have the details. And I'm being told I won't have the details on that until maybe mid-January. And once I do, I will get with staff and we can kind of sit down. Um, I'll sit with Lori and we can kind of map out something if it it can if and see if it can fit. Fantastic. Thank you for your impromptu explanation. I appreciate it. 
when do but I'd be more than happy if and if you guys want I mean at the next meeting I can definitely bring you a thing and kind of present to you more of a, a detailed thing of how um, Travel Oregon works. You know, it's a state agency, just like Business Oregon, and how we receive our tourism funding through that and all that good stuff. Maybe February. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Already full in January, your husband. <laughs> what is the time horizon for the... Um the grant it, when does it close in other words um usually when they um release the grants it, it's about a month uh, uh opening to get that grant application in um we are the destination management organization they call us the dmo um so we're the dmo designated dmo for columbia county um, in most places, it's it's usually chambers, but um, in years past, uh, because the chambers uh, in Columbia County are so volunteer based, and so there was never consistent um, consistency <laughs> with staffing. Uh, that's when uh, Columbia Economic Team was asked to take that that role on. Okay, thanks. Has anyone? Uh, process considered a real current leakage study, uh, which is the analysis of just here, which means that the reverse of an uh, that reverse tells somebody who ought to come here. I mean, when I did Fred Myers in Scapos, I did a very, very elongated and could merchandise being sold in this community that they ought to be here. And and it seems like we're we go past that. We, we, you know, we're we're not related to to the opportunity, not just the opportunity. I mean, Brian and I were talking yesterday about the vacancies in in his buildings. Uh, is there a demand here? We we keep working like the huge demand to be in Scapoose for something. But the answer is, who wants to be here? We got forty thousand cars that drive by every day, but they're not stopping. I mean, I in the microphone. It's just for the online vote. As a retailer, speak well, and address yeah. this specifically. Base, base retail. I mean, yeah, I mean, to me, you know, it's the same. Thing. Those people, they stopped when they put the St. Helens grocery outlet in. They stopped coming to my store. And again, you can go back to the light poles or that. And I'm an outsider coming in that, you know, there's there's nothing here to draw people. You drive through Scapoose in the blink of an eye. Yeah. There's nothing to get them to to. And I've been coming here for 50 years, you know, with family, grandmas and grandpas that work down. At, and and those things. And and again, you drive. Again, I lost thirty thousand dollars a week in sales because they're driving by. There's there's nothing, nothing stopping them. Okay. Well, that, no, that's just exactly what I'm saying is that we're not capturing that, whether it's not parking lots or whether it's not. Whether it's not merchandisers, whether it's not advertising, I don't know if any seen the new uh, one minute or one and a half minute. Takeda advertisement, it's beautiful. It shows the river. It shows the community. It shows fishing. It shows people going to shops and stores. Estacada is about half the size of Scapoose, and yet. We market the question is what would we market? I, I yeah, it, what you're talking about is the fact that we keep saying we want this, we want that, but we have no proof to say that for a business, potential business, that there's that. That's so support would would actually clarify some things for us. It would stop stop us talking about stuff that the ever get, or if it did, it would just fail, and then it and potentially it might. Some businesses to come out here, like a hotel, um, so that would have, so that we would have some about a hotel saying, "Hey, come out here," and we say, "Well, we have this many nights a week that are going to St. Helens and Portland through a leakage report," and, and so that would be a tool for recruiting businesses. It sounds the county economic team could ever accomplish it. 
We were close on the hotel. A report like that might push you over the top. Waiting for 50 year plan and the interest rates to go down. Paul. Red means on. Um, I agree with what you guys just said. It, and, you know, it goes back to that branding message that we don't have. Kate, it didn't make a video of um, industrial and fly over it and say, look how cool this is. They made a video of um, an emotional connection, you know, whether it be the outdoors or the quaintness of a downtown. And uh, I think that's solely miss, so, sorely missing here. Um, and it's not just a video. It would have to be uh, throughout the entire city of where we put our resources, uh, what's important to us. Things would then help draw businesses here, help people stop and uh, maybe shop at, at other locations. Um, it's kind of funny because every time I think people like, oh, marketing. There was a video. The videos are the are the uh, what comes out at your branding plan. Um, it's part of it. Going back to this because we struggle with it in every meeting I'm at, whether it be a parks meeting or the 50 year plan is like, what are we all about? Um, why do people want to be here? Why do people want to come here? It's every year. What should be called? What should be the focus? If we had a branding plan, all those things would fall. Opinion. Um, so I, I'm glad it's kind of goals, but it'd be great if we could maybe even bring it to a higher level and maybe get some money from the council and actually really attack it. Uh, I think we have a budget. How much? How much do we need, Paul? We want to go, but I think we'd have to. Uh, start with maybe this committee or another committee um, kind of outlining what we need to do and then bring a consultant in and help us, to be honest. Chair, sure. so, I mean. Um, yeah, Paul's right that, you know, until council adopts this as a goal, which is not going to happen until their next fiscal year in July 2023, staff doesn't have the resources to dedicate a ton of time and especially not a consultant to something like this. Well, I think the committee, the the, the pre-work that they can do is just our program again. Like, you know, what do you want us to be? Mm -hmm. Make those recommendations. A transitional vehicle to our strong real estate companies, okay? I'm not talking about locals who are selling houses. I'm talking about Portland that have national account relationships and say, okay, the, the chicken company wants to be, will be here because there's a nice number of traffic. The, the oil painting company will be here, whatever it is. We don't have a real estate community. I don't mean to insult it. But we don't have a real estate community that has national tenant relationships. So if we introduce them to this community, maybe somebody will, I know 10 companies that would like to be here because, and their background, a local. Okay. We have a lot. Is there anything else? Well, how do we want to proceed? I mean, our, our action is our action plan or goals approved by council. No. I, I can. These are all of the goals that you all voted. They have been uh, Christine and Brian brought them in the work session, but they haven't been approved or even that the council hasn't even sat. I can session is that the council was generally pretty. Goals and you all in the urban renewal process and going marketing the urban renewal program and then also creating vision recommendations because that's finding a brand and an identity is something council has been trying to do for a long long time um so while they haven't been adopted there's definitely some uh reception on these goals but 
these won't kick off until uh, July 1st and if they get adopted. So that, yeah. I can still work on these in the next. Absolutely. And that's the, the point of the point of putting it on the agenda today is to do the background work to start to start brainstorming and just having a conversation with everyone of like how ideas um, and you know a more developed plan honestly increases the chances that count adopts these. Okay. But yeah, the, I, I I do need to make it clear that none of these have been voted on and resources have not been dedicated to these yet. <clears throat> that you all know where these are actually. Okay. You sure? Hey, felt like you had a chair. Paul Vogel has his hand up. Oh, Mr. Vogel. Just a suggestion. Um, you've got a, a bit of a gap of time with the fiscal year. Part of any, no matter who you hire to, to help you through this branding process, part of the exercise is going to be um, asking for a lot of feedback from participants and and I would suggest this committee about what have you seen that you think is effective? And I think the, the you know, the Estacada video uh, is one example. Paul's Paul's observation that, you know, the video video is part of the deliverable of the overall strategy. Um, they're going to ask, they're going to ask, what have you seen that you like? Why do you like it? Um, what do you think? What do you think is is effective in your mind? What are your favorite favorite websites for cities like you or what are your favorite websites or what's your favorite marketing and branding overall what really catches your attention so that's a lot of diligence that you could actually be doing as a committee or as individuals even leading up to um you know when, when there is funding available because that's that's something that's going to need to happen anyway but it also would start it provide something for discussion uh, by the committee and and move this move this process down the road um, before it gets fully kicked off. Just a thought, uh, you know, ra ra raisings. I saw this in this meeting. I, that's the first step. But people actually being kind of making an effort, effort to spend a couple of hours online uh, uh, a week or a month and just grab files of your favorite stuff helps with the thought process and helps really kind of focus things together. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Hey, Christine, I had a question. Right. Hey, hey um, NJ, mm -hmm. um, is there any left that might be able to be directed towards a leakage study? Or is that is that program pretty much done? It would. So my understanding is that it's not completely closed, but it, I mean, for money, very specific things that right. has, like, there was talk on the council of trying to get the senior center some money with ARPA dollars. And one of the difficulties was identifying a project that actually meets the requirements of the ARPA program. So that's, and, and most, most generally I know that it, the, the, the expenses kind of have to be COVID incurred. Um, and so that that was the difficulty for the senior center specifically. But ARPA money in general is not closed, is my understanding. And does the city have a fair bit of funds still left in that under allocation, or is it or is it getting down to nickels and dimes? No, there because there was there was some things that the county of uh, and decided not to fund. So there there are some there are some dollars left. Uh, may I add, because I've read that um, a million times, um, there is definitely uh, structures around um, and not only tourism, but uh, uh, increasing tourism uh, in the future, which you could put that leakage study around tourism, which is, you know, are people stop stopping here? And then many things. You could, so you can include hotel. And yeah, you exactly. Could, you could probably extrapolate that out to cover most things. Absolutely. I, I wrote this down to bring up with city manager Rains, and I'll bring uh, I'll email you a response on if this could potentially be explored. Thank you, um, Joe. I'm only calling on you as the most the longest resident that we have, right? 
So I think this is what's in my head is who is Skepoos? Who were they? I think they were sauerkraut. So is that is that right? Is that my Oh, okay. You, like knock it out, but how can we have gone a hundred and two years with no identity? Well, I don't think we have one thing that we just gravitate. The sauerkraut festival was, powwow kind of was. The Native American, first indigenous, those are something that we constantly are and have history on and something we can look at. Um, because that, you know, being in our name as Scappoose Indians, I mean, that's the one thing that kind of keeps coming back. They want to change it to the salmon. Not if we do everything, not if we brand it then they they might change it to something else, but uh, the Native American heritage. Um, it's hard without, I don't, I've been here 42 years and I don't know of, I can't think of one thing that just we are. Um, seaside to coast, I mean, that's an easy one. Anything, even Sandy, they like hood, even though they're a little bit away. They have one thing they can really focus on. We don't have that um, other than, everyone going to work in Beaverton and Portland. I mean, yeah. and so we really have to change our culture and kind of turn it back and um, come up with something. That's why I do want input from the citizens and what they think. There's still a lot of citizens have been here a lot longer than I have, and it would be good to really hear. Go around to other is it see what you like. I mean, even driving through Madras now, it, it looks so much different than it did 20 years ago, and it, it looks like, wow, and, and that's simple. Um, but I don't know. I don't know what our one thing is. We might not have one. the candle is something. I mean, it's peace. We spend money on this candle. We invest in it. We could be, you know, city of peace, city of hope. I mean, you know, you could, you know, keep Scapoose weird. Remember, that plays off of those. I, I don't have the one thing. I, I like to really think of it. I'm an athletic type coach. We could really become athletics. Uh, community center, sports, have tournaments, have people come in here, have a youth program that we do all sorts of just you know, little league, but we, we have all sorts of activities for seniors um, that will take advantage of it. Um, I've always wanted to a youth sports coordinator that develop all center, you know, all the kids sports, athletics, after day uh, coaching the coaches. I mean, there's stuff like that that I'd like to see little more emphasis, but not just one thing. You know, it's funny you should say that. I, over the last 18 years, that's my life, right, is my children and their sporting activities. But as I've got one almost, one out of the house and one getting closer to leaving the nest, it's like, then, then what? Then what? So, Casey, how long have you been here? So a little less than him. Well, you look at, you compare Madras, but think okay. about. You've been here a long time. Uh, Sorry, I interrupted you. You compare Madras, but think about Madras. They have a hospital. They have a, a huge pool system. Got uh, recreational fields. Uh, a, a completely opposite act, inter, inter community activity than Scapoos. Right next to. Um, but, that's but, our well, but they're on a, a highway. Madras is obviously Madras is. Madras. But but Madras is soft. 7,300 people the other day. Right. They have Billy Chinook. They have Mount Hood. They have regular building another one. Right. So they have people that come to just visit and stay and go camping and yeah, right. hit all the lakes, rivers. I mean, the, people, the people that would stay in a hotel and be people who are going to Portland and don't want to pay Portland's prices. Now, we we've got activities sporting activities and things that interface you're not going to get 150 or 200 rooms of local traffic that traffic is going to be going the price of portland is over is outpriced what they can afford so that's what a hotel would do here yes we are we're kind of an enigma we're we're a, a community to a major city it doesn't really have an interlocking. So what do we do? What are we? Are we are we a great place to live? Yeah. We like the people that were here. Yeah. So maybe that's what we are. Maybe that's how. 
the best of the community. We, I would center too. We could become more of an industrial with high tech businesses. That type of people in with family wage jobs, get some housing to match, then maybe the hotel, maybe the restaurants will come, but we can really focus on that high tech can be used more. I mean, and out of there better. I mean, that's, that's one focus. We talk about recreation. I mean, we don't have a lot of big, long trails. We're really little city limits wise with, but we can, and, and the river, the, the channel and, and start building up some of that recreation. I like to see trails of the city that hook walk or walk your dog to and connect and bike. We're livable. Oh yeah, definitely we're livable. You know, and you talk about the that uh, annexation first passed. The numbers we're talking about were hundred people employed out there, and eighteen hundred uh, PM peak trips on Crown Road, which is impossible, but it's a great idea. But uh, you know, and then think of what that influx would do to the community because we obviously we don't have enough. We do a land inventory here. There's no land here to build another thousand houses. But do we want to become, if we're multifamily, then we're just Portland. So, you know, what, what do, what do, yeah, that's what, all what, part of the 50 year plan, making that, those decisions in the 50 year plan. One of the high tech issues is that PB, the PUD can't deliver any power. Uh -oh, right, you're on the spot again. You got 10 megs to deliver to the airport. Oh, it, yes, it is. So the question is, you know, I talked to Mike about this a month ago, and and I because we were one of my son-in-laws worked for a, a computer center, a data center, and I asked him. He said 50 megs. Mike, can you deliver 50 megs? I think he said someplace up in the north. North of uh, uh, Rainier, somewhere up in there where the, the all the power lines cross, he said I could get 50 right there, but otherwise there's no 50 anywhere in the county. Anyway, I'll just say real, um, you know, there's been a lot of talk about outdoor and recreation, um, and I do think that that's something that we have, but it would take a, a shift in our priorities to make it happen. Like you can't just market it. You know, we, I've seen some great plans. Casey's got some great ideas about extending the CZ Trail all the way through town and around and all the way down to Rocky Point, pretty much. Um, that's where we'd have to be spending our money. We could have spent our ARPA money on a trail system because it's tourist based outdoor. Getting people. We chose to get new police cars, um, which because we thought we needed them, which is fine. Um, but many communities spent that money on uh, something that isn't just normally a, a, a item. It's not just a branding exercise. It's, it's, it's determining, like creating who we want to be. Like if we are about outdoor, it's, it's our 40 miles of trail that we're going to put all the way through, all the way up to St. Helens. You know, it's all these other things. And I'm not saying that's the answer, but the answer is going to be that it's not just about give me a catchphrase, you know, great. OK, cool. Let's get a video. So this is what I call with. I can be bossy. Like in your holiday functions coming forward. People, you now ask the question, who are we and what do you want to who do we want to be? Ask the questions of your skip who's neighbors and family members. It's not that it's a big part of it, sports and school. That's why I moved here is so my kids could have a, a I didn't want urban children. I wanted rural country children. But again, now what? So how does that affect the rest of the community also? So Christine, what? the one I have about 8,500 people and we really want, I want to focus on them that live here and in the area you, know, you that are right outside for them. I mean, they live here. They they go to the stores. They pay the taxes. 
and then maybe you find things to attract more people, it, tourists. I mean, but I really the people that are here, the kids, the seniors, um, and maybe keep people or going from Beaverton to eat and shop all the time. But let's and and engage a lot of people that have come in. I want them to get engaged with our community. Amazing. One of those every Friday night all through this community together and really help the, the residents here first. I agree with that. Somebody asked me, I live up on Callahan Road and probably yeah, like maybe 50 houses. I mean, it's, it's getting asked at our HOA meeting on Monday, uh, where do you go for happy hour? I'm like, uh, Portland. So kind of sad. Like I really had to think about where I go for happy hour. We don't have a happy hour. <laughs> My car. I got a thought that contradicts yeah. Joe a little. I appreciate what you're saying. You know, you want to focus on Scappoose residents, but I think you yourself short not to realize that St. Helens is part of this. It's good for Scappoose is good for both. And uh, along with Vernonia and everything in between, because a big part of who we the outdoors in our small communities in St. Helens or Scappoose, um, I would really consider, you know, Vernonia and St. Helens is complimentary. Um, because we're the gateway. To it's a draw, a draw for certain assets in St. Helens and people are going to be passing Scappoose on the way there. There might be things here that you could think, you know, you're far enough, you might out on their way through or on the way back from, from St. Helens and start to just appreciate this area more and that will be good for Scappoose. So, um, I, I, you know, in a micro regional way, I think this committee and, and Scappoose should be thinking about the small towns around. Yeah, we're near Portland. Right. We have the hood to come here and it'd be really good to market our town at that time, bringing everyone in, see what we have. Um, and they'll remember it. And the hood or the Seattle have people coming through. market on the little blue honey bucket okay so here we are at the end of 2022 thank you very much i'm glad we have our new our three new members fantastic and it's going to be activity i'm so excited for our crew and I hope you all have happy holidays with your families. And oh, Lynn has something to say. Is he, this is my this is my last. What? Are you my, what? Last, my last CDC. You're quitting publicly? We yeah, I'm quitting publicly. We <laughs> right you into saying. I'd like to say something. Lynn doesn't get as much credit as he should get. I think that he, he should. He has probably done more for economic development for this town than any single person. Sad not to have him. Oh, why are you I, I hit that 80 calendar age, and, and I, and I'm on Thursdays. <laughs> what? Was, it the, was it the was it the bagels? I think it was the bagels. I mean, besides, bagels. Besides, besides that, the quality of the lunches have gone down. Unbelievable. <laughs> No, it's, you know, I've been involved with this for about 10 years and, and I'm not doing anything business life that's related now to expanding scapos. I'm still, we need your wisdom. I'm still, I'm still doing some consulting work and pension stuff and I've got some other things on my head. So uh, it's just time to, to kind of relieve. I'm probably going to walk away from the drainage district at the same thing uh, just because of the time consumption and what I can't direction they don't want to listen so <laughs> and, and uh, I think there's you know there's a heck of a future out here because it's totally unique it's just a matter of capturing the opportunity thank well, you. you will be missed then huh? you will be missed thank you so much <laughs> stop for a beer once in a while <laughs> okay I'll do that you know I'll let you talk yeah you know beer <laughs> uh, not at noon. <laughs>
Come for the 6 p.m. meetings, maybe. We don't wigwam. No, no. Uh, okay, so our next meetings are, that's better, January 19th. Uh, oh, you know what? I'm I'm not going to be here. I'm going to be in the Virgin Islands on the 19th. Brian, you have to do the 19th meeting. I'm going to miss the whole light pole thing. Tell Chris. No, I don't. That will sadden me. <laughs> so I won't be here on the 19th. So oh, sorry. And then February 16th and then March 16th. So, but thank you so much for your participation. Appreciate it, everyone. Sorry, Lynn, that you're leaving us. Ten, I did the hammer thing. Can you say meeting adjourned?